Hi, welcome to the Diablo Podcast. We are online at DiabloInGamers.com. I'm your host, Flux, and on the show this week is uh, Junior Mint. Hello. And Mugs. Greetings. And if my voice sucks, I'm having allergies today, so I'll let them talk more than usual. Obviously, we've got a ton of stuff to talk about. We're recording this on Sunday evening, and Gamescom has just ended, because Germany's in like a different time zone, and it's, it's weird over there. And lots of new stuff we're going to talk about. We're actually doing two podcasts today with two different guests. So you'll be hearing these guys for about 40 minutes or so. And then a later show, we're going to cover other, other topics. So we're going to break it up a little bit here. Otherwise, we would have done four hours on one show and would have never had to. I would have been editing it all weekend. <laughs> so we're going to talk about definitely uh, the Crusader here and Paragon 2.0 and Loot 2.0 and then saving other topics for the second show. But first, it's been a while since either of you guys have been on the show. Why don't you go first, Muggs, and tell us when you were last on the podcast and what you've been playing in the game lately. Oh, shoot. I don't remember the last time I was on the podcast. It's got to have been at least six months, maybe eight months since the last time. Um, but, and Reaper of Souls has brought you crawling back out. And Reaper of Souls has got me more excited than I was for the original D3 Classic beta, honestly. So how long since you uninstalled Diablo 3? I haven't. I still play hardcore. Um, I play exclusively hardcore, actually. Just like every single other person on the podcast. Funny how that works out. Well, so what have you been up to lately? Um, besides, let's see, I finished all my Steam sale games, so now I'm back in the D3. Um, I've got my P56 Monk that's pushing MP6 in hardcore, and uh, I'm having a good time. Uh, I can't sell anything anymore. It seems like everybody's done, gone and disappeared. But other than that, I'm still enjoying the game. And you're grinding away furiously to build up Paragon 2.0 level? Actually, I'm stopped right now because I know my luck I'll die right before they release the patch for Paragon 2.0 so I've stopped playing my monk and then I started playing other characters so at least I don't lose the big bulk of my XP yeah, that's the funny thing with the hardcore where you, you don't want to die there's going to be a great recycling I've been calling it like as soon as the patch comes out with Paragon 2.0 everyone's going to just input their characters and delete a bunch of you know Paragon 20s they're sick of or something and, actually uh, I heard the uh, just to jump in for a second I heard the game director or I saw on a bullet point they said that even hardcore characters that have died, you keep those Paragon levels for the account-wide Paragon levels, uh, is what I think I read earlier today. That's after the system is in place. Oh, yeah, that's, is that what it is? Okay, yeah. okay. So people are, yeah, we're, yeah they haven't, they're not really sure about this yet. We'll get to you. Uh, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm running on the intro here for five minutes. But yeah, we're going anyway, to save this for Paragon 2 in a minute. So you, you just jump in here, Junior. I mean, what, how long have you been on the podcast and what have you been up to? Um, I uh, was on, I think about a month or a month and a half ago with Xanth. Uh, I was on the show when Xanth was talking about his uh, interview with Blizzard that he had to turn down. Um, and so I'd been, been about a month or so. I... Same with uh, Mugs here. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> the announcement of Reaper Souls has definitely got me back into the game in excitement. Um, I've been playing my uh, Monk as well. That's my latest uh, character I've been leveling up. Only uh, Paragon level 25 at the moment, but I uh, really love that class and definitely plan to main that into the expansion at this point. So, uh, yeah, I just started playing again this weekend and uh, back into it again. Actually playing Act 3, too, because it's been so long. So there you go. It's just, this is all hardcore for you now, too? No, no. I'm. Uh, doing... Thank God, there's somebody who doesn't play hardcore. <laughs> I know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not on the cool kid bus there, I guess. But uh, I keep saying I'm going to do it and not, not get into it. So we'll see. Well, that reminds me of a question I have when we get to the Crusader part here. But we, we were just getting into Paragon 2.0. So from what we know about the system, they're not sure about exactly how it's going to go. But it seems like when, when the system goes live, which is going to be in Diablo 3 Classic, it's not you know, purely for the expansion. It's going to be, that's going to go in before the expansion actually is released. And when will that be? Who knows? We have that for topic as well. But as you were saying, it's, it's going to be all of your current experience as, as Paragon. You know, all of, the, all of the experience you've gained as a max level character gets added up and that becomes your Paragon level and that's across your entire account. And no individual characters have levels anymore. And there's about a thousand questions about that. I just posted an article about that literally like an hour ago. So are you, you said you were excited about that, Mugs. You're trying not to die with your monk. It's a little bit of pressure on hardcore characters in the meantime, you know? It really is. I mean, it, it's a lot of pressure, but once it goes through, it it's relieves all that pressure because then you don't feel like, you know, yeah, I lost the gear that's on my character, but if I lost a P60, like I'm at P60 right now, we're right around there, I, you know, that's going to take 100 and something, 160, 170 hours to get back to that point again, regardless of all the gear that I've had. So, like, now it feels like, okay, you know, maybe if I can replace the gear, especially with crafting, it's not so bad getting back into it. You know, trying to get back up to yeah. that point, that pace. 
my monk just hit Paragon 90 in hardcore, so wow. I'm a little paranoid now wow. about playing at all. That's yeah, nice. yeah. So what is your total uh, your total array of characters there, Junior Mint, in softcore? Uh, to be honest, um, I haven't played a lot lately. So I have a few characters in the mid-20s, and uh, unfortunately, once I've gotten to that point, I have had a hard time uh, keeping at it, to be honest. So I have a, a, my Monk at 25, Demon Hunter 25 or 26, and my Barb at 20. I just kind of bounce in between, so... Um, you know, I, I lost. I definitely faded in terms of interest, but this has uh, brought me back in. So I'd like to see how high I can get before the expansion. So you don't really have a main because many people, you know, I mean, we have this whole thing about the drop rates. I've been in this big kind of study of that, surveying fans, and people really say that well, over 300 or 400 percent Magic Finder really makes a big difference. Yeah, I know. And so most people, like, I have a level 90, and then I have a couple of level 20s now in hardcore, and that's it. Well, I'm trying to main my monk at this point because I really, really like that class. I've been saying to myself, I wish I picked up this class from the beginning because it's really fun. I, I really like it a lot. Um, and I played, you know, you look at my played list and I put 180 hours into my demon hunter and he's the same power, uh, paragon level as my monk, which is really kind of sad. Uh, and at this point, demon hunter, I just can't stay focused anymore. You just die on the silliest things and can't deal with that anymore. So I'm definitely maining the monk at this point. It's funny you mentioned that. I wasn't even going to bring it up, but I'm, I just was playing a new Witch Doctor. Well, it wasn't new. It's been it's in hardcore, and it's been like it was level thirty three for like months. I mean, I just hadn't played it in forever, and I just played with Xanth last week when he got to he, he got his Witch Doctor to one hundred and Paragon, you know, hardcore hardcore hundred Paragon. That's impressive. And I was eighty nine at the time with my monk, so that we we actually recorded that video. I'm going to post that on our YouTube at some point here. We had a, nice. we did a live feed of it when it happened, but. But anyway, I was, you know, I played with his Witch Doctor a lot, and I was like, well, I've kind of like, I've kind of just been grinding the monk. I'm getting a little bored with the same character over and over again. I'm thinking I should level up some of my other characters a little bit. So I was doing the Witch Doctor last night, and he's like mildly twinked, but not like spectacularly or anything. And I'm, I'm in Nightmare Act Three at like level 42, and just kind of charging along, and you know, playing MP5, kind of getting some quick kills for experience. And I'm doing the thing where you do. Um, Spirit walk, and then you run through a bunch of stuff and get into a big crowd and hit. Um, God, I'm, I'm blanking on all the skill names. You know, the one skill that you always use to buff if there's five monsters in range, it buffs they know your damage. Exactly what you're you know, talking about, so. yeah. Yeah, and then you run back out and then you start hitting them. And I did that. I'm just kind of. I wouldn't do that on on Inferno because you know you're hardcore and if you die, it's bad. But of course, I do that, and it turns out the bo- I ran through some little tiny doorway in keep level three, and it was entirely <laughs> full of plagued vortex. Was the boss? Oh my god! <laughs> and the second I ran back out, snaps me with the vortex right back into the room. I'm in this corner of this little room with like nine. It was like a horde or something, you know. It was, it was only a nightmare, but I was completely trapped. Didn't uh, prox air order. vessel. And I had just used my yeah. I had, I had just used my spirit walk, and it proc spirit vessel like immediately. And I was able to run back out, and I had like, you know, I, even after I got back out, I had like 500 hit points. I used a potion, too, and I saw like 500 hit points. Luckily, I wasn't that far from the egg, exit, so I just ran back and went through the, you know, the stairs back down to keep two. <laughs> but as I was thinking, you know, if I was a demon hunter, that was the end of my character. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just yeah. like that. I mean, witch doctors are the hardcore easy mode, if you ask me. They get the two get and out had, of jail free cards. Yeah, our monks, too, but yeah. <laughs> But I'd had, of course, with a witch doctor, I mean, with a demon hunter, I would have had probably some more discipline. I could have you done another smoke screen, you know. With a witch doctor, you do it once and you're done for 15 seconds. Well, hopefully so. with a demon hunter, you wouldn't have run in there in the first place. Yeah, I would have had no need, <laughs> no reason to. But, I mean, I had a couple of really close calls. My last, my demon hunter has been Paragon 13 for a while and kind of almost retired. But I had multi, I had three of them die in the 50s before I ever got it, one finally in a Paragon level. And now it's got 200 million in gear and I'm afraid to play it. Did but. you get your demon hunter <laughs> into hardcore level 60? Yeah, it's, it's Paragon 13 now. In hardcore, I'm saying, right? Yeah. Nah, nice, nice. Yeah, I died at 50, 50, my, my first three Demon Hunters in hardcore. Actually, first, the name of the character is Immor, Immortina, and um, it, it's Immortina space V. And the V is a Roman numeral, so that's that gives you a... That's one, yeah. Yeah, so it, that's why you don't name <laughs> nice. your character Immortal, because yeah. that's just tempting the gods. I've, but yeah, I had this whole, I had this whole argument with, um, you know, I did an interview with Wyatt and um, Josh some months ago. And I did this whole thing pushing them about how the Demon Hunter is the one class that doesn't have a death cheating pass but really needs one. They and they're like, yeah, and why, why it was like, well, you know, we don't like to put things on characters because other characters have the same thing. It's good if they have differences and varieties. Oh, that's such a cop out. And I'm like, I agree with that completely. But in this case, it's like you have the, the squishiest class in the game, and it's the only class without a death cheating pass, of, except for the Barbarian. And it's the one they nerfed the hardest need one. in the beginning, and they never fixed. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's you know they have good DPS and they're really fast and you can move around a lot. I mean, I'm appreciating that, but I mean just literally that I'm playing a witch doctor and I'm immediately you know like just right away okay this is if a demon hunter had this I would be so much happier to play it. 
And like the whole thing, Xanth was saying on when I was doing the live stream with him, you know, I was talking about his, his build and his class and his experience, and he's like, I really like having Spirit Vessel because I can play a lot more risky and not to always be so careful. You can charge in, you can take a few more chances, it just gives you more of a variety of play styles. Oh, it's the best oh shit was, in the game. Yeah, and I was totally noticing that with the demon with the witch doctor because I could like run in and get my you know get all your procs up and get your gr- gruesome feasts and all that kind of stuff going, and you just can't do that with a demon hunter in hardcore. You have to be so careful. So my hardcore demon hunter's got you know it's paragon thirteen. I think it's got seventy eight thousand hit points and like six hundred res all wow. and like I, I almost have a, I was using a shield for a while but that just got too slow. But you just have to. It's not so much that you can't play the class without that because you can, but it just it just limits your build so much. It's the one class compared, I haven't taken the sixty. Having, yeah, well, that's why. <laughs> I mean, at all, and even in softcore, I haven't even touched it. Like I've got yeah, my every other class. My first main was my first main softcore is a demon hunter. I got to paragon yeah, sixty, yeah. and I love it. But I would just die constantly. You know, I, I could do MP two pretty well, but anything higher than that, there's just so little margin for error. That's why I just couldn't play anyway, it anymore. Seriously. Yeah, but I, I just that was that was my favorite class in the game until I really got into monks. You know, many it was you know many months ago when I started doing hardcore at this point. But it's just like when you when you see the exact across the board comparison. Okay, I'm, I'm used to demon hunter. Here's a witch doctor, and I wish I had this with my demon hunter. Since so we were I, uh, talking about Paragon 2.0, I just wanted to say also probably the coolest part about it is you know being able to put all those points into where you actually want to put them um i've just been thinking about that so much and like how much are they going to let you put into crit chance and crit damage and attack speed and like 50 what, points every, yeah, we right. just don't know how many points you get you know what you get for that 50 right. points but everything's 50 points right now 50 points, actually we okay. do there's a screenshot of that today is there i just posted that in the news earlier so wait, what do you think it's going to be, crit chance? Do you think it's just going to be like 0.1% like every point, like anything else? It's, that? it's on the screenshot. If you look on DiabloLeteGamers.com oh, right now, there's okay. a screenshot in the top news post. I, gotta I mean, it could always change, it right but now. yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Attack tab, each point. Attack speed, 0.2%. Per, they're, all, they're all 20%. Uh, sorry, attack speed, 20%. Critical strike. It's now called critical strike chance, which is very, very different, I'm sure. So That's critical strike, 2%. you get 1%, 1% per... Oh. Critical strike damage, you get one percent. So you get fifty percent critical strike damage, and math is going to escape me right now. That's not very much. I no, mean, that's, that's not that's a lot one at all. Passage of barbarian. <laughs> it's really not. I mean, fifty percent critical hit damage is is nothing, especially with you know everything scaling in in with the uh, with the gear scaling that we're going to be getting coming up pretty soon. I hope they but, in, they increase that. No. They might put caps on critical hit chance now or something. You know, that's one of the things people have complained about a lot. Yeah. So if critical strike but... chance is point two, so that'll you'll be able to get a total of ten percent crit. So yeah. that's I guess that's not too overpowered. That's that's that seems right. And of course, we have no idea how many points you get or you know where the where the exp curve goes on that. Right. Uh, yeah, it could like do diminishing returns. I wouldn't be surprised. But the other big question is: Is do you? you know, they, they said in one of the interviews you get access to your Paragon points at level one, but we don't know if that's the full suite of Paragon points, or you know, maybe you only get ten percent of your Paragon points, and each each ten levels you get more or something. That's going to make releveling in hardcore though, like oh, so much easier. Oh yeah, that's yeah, going to that, be nice. Yeah, that's meaningless in softcore, really. Yeah. I mean, who cares? But yeah, in hardcore, it's just like when you go back and you know, I'm, I'm leveling a barb right now just to have one and just, just to be able to throw like an extra you know, 250 vitality on them to go through an MP10 and plow through it, you know, 10 times faster would be so much more worth it. Yeah, and you look at the uh, the course, the core tab, and you get five points per Paragon point into any of your stats. Yeah, that's a well, lot. Even the, you, even the def- defense tab, if we can get all res, I mean, can you imagine having all res in Hell and Hardcore? I mean, that's the one place that, like, Hell is actually harder than Inferno in Hardcore. Yeah, it is. Because yeah. all you have yeah, is vitality to, like, keep you alive. The fearsome 50s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a whole article about that. You think about the Paragon stats now. I mean, each level you get, what, three to your primary stat. And here, if you're getting five points per level, then you're getting, what, 15, uh, 25 points to your main stat. It's I mean, so much nicer. Yeah. But it's caps. And, but it, right oh, now yeah, you get ca- 300. I keep forgetting about the cap, yeah. Yeah. Right now you get 300. Was it 300, 200, 100, 100? Is that what it is for Paragon? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that means for your main stat, you you won't hit the same level as you would. For, that you can right now as a P100. Of course, it might be changing, et cetera, et cetera but... Right. No. So we have, we've had these arguments forever about how they can fix attributes and make you know, like, you know, make the off attributes more valuable, and they haven't said a word about that, but they keep saying lots more coming at BlizzCon, lots more at BlizzCon, so... Well, there's a lot of questions to... I have for BlizzCon. Like, my big question is, does Inferno... The second we install Reaper of Souls, does Inferno become level 70? Do we have to go back to hell to level? 
to 70, or do we look uh, at the level? Only if you don't want to die. Well, I mean, but does Inferno, right now, Inferno's flat level 60, like all the way through it, you know, at MP1 or whatever. You know, 60, if you count the eye levels, it's 61, 62, but it's level 60 all the way through. So does that mean when I install Reaper of Souls, the day I install it, does Inferno become 70 all the way through? I would assume so. So that means I got to go back to hell, to level, to 10, to 70? I don't think so. I, 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 I would say you're, you're at 60 and you're in Inferno, and any of the farming you do is going to get you XP. You know? Yeah, so but I'm, go, I'm not going to beat up a level 70 mob as a level 60 character. Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. But you'll probably need to get better gear to survive Inferno anyway, so... Maybe the right, mobs so would just scale with you. Maybe they just scale with you. That would be cool. That would be good. That's something I was thinking. Or if you go to MP0, maybe like Act 1 will have a level, Act 2 will have a level, Act 3 will have a level. Like you'd actually have to play through the game in Inferno. And or maybe you could only level in Act 5. That's that, yeah. That was the other thing. Well, Act Five is not that big. I mean, it's, it's the size of yeah. Act Two. There's no way I'm getting ten levels in Act Two. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? It's an Act Two that we were debating this in a in a forum post. Which is the biggest act now in the game? I thought it was one, personally. See, I think it's two. You think? It's yeah, two? I'd say two. I think one has the most areas, but so many of them are tiny. Yeah. I mean, it's got the most waypoints. It definitely has. The, well, that's what I was going on. It has. The, but there's really, I mean, there's only one really big level, and that's the field. You know. Well, that's the only. Yeah, one none of the none of the dungeons are that big. But the northern and southern highlands are really big. Then well, all the little side dungeons in Act One make are really. Yeah, different. they're like one level. Though. I mean, you look at Act Two big though. The oasis though. That's true. Yeah, the oasis and the desolate sands are gigantic, yeah. and then there's three. There's two really big Zoltan cool cool levels, and there's two really big dungeons below all of the surface areas in Act Two. Yeah, I need to go and back all those, there's, there's like five sewer levels, and no one ever does more than once. But those are damn big too. That's why no one ever does them again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but it's not that much different, really. I mean, in I was hoping it would be at least two acts worth of content, but in that interview, he said no. When they asked, that whole yes no interview, I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah, they yeah, said yeah, it's going to be two. I saw that. <laughs> that was a great interview, by the way. I really enjoyed that. But anyway, I, I hoped it would be uh, t two acts. But what are you going to do? That was my only disappointment. Out of everything yeah. that's come out. From from Reaper of Souls, like I've you know I've ingested every little piece that I could get my hands on. My only disappointment, and I I kind of expected it anyway, was that it was just one act. It was like I don't know. I was like secretly hoping it was going to be like two acts worth of 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 content. But the loot runs and Nephilim trials really make up for that. Too. Yeah, I think yeah, that's all make that. it great. Yeah. I think they wanted to make the act so it was like a coherent, you know, storytelling kind of gameplay experience, and not just put like a triple sized act just to give us more stuff to grind in. Yeah. Because they're making the the loot runs and probably other in game stuff they haven't told us about yet. They keep saying in game for everyone, and all we, all we know about in game for everyone now is is loot runs. And so, I mean, there's got to be. Or, that's not everyone, you know. Well, they got but the is loot runs only going to be at max level, or is that going to be at any level? I assume it's Inferno only, but yeah. I could be wrong. They, I don't think they specified that. I'm going to assume the Nephilim trials are any level, though. That's yeah, those are just random little occasional pop-up bonus features, though. I mean, that's not really in... I guess it is in the game in a way, but... Well, if you played Torchlight 2, it's very... Torchlight yeah, it's the phase beast. Yeah. So... So, anyway, we should describe Nephilim trials, as, as they described it, are... You'll find these, like, orbs just sort of randomly located in the dungeons, like an event, almost. Maybe, there are any, maybe they can be anywhere. We don't know yet, but... And you'll click it, and you go into like a special, you know, special dungeon set thing, and it's like you get waves and waves of monsters, and the longer you can survive, or the more you can advance, the better your ultimate rewards are. It sounds like it was a timed event kind of thing. So it's like yeah, it says, yeah, they said rewards equal multiple resplendent chests or something like that at the end. Yeah, like the more you'll do, the more golden chests you'll earn. Yeah. But I mean, they, it can't be just go until you die because hardcore, right? So there's got to be a. Well, I oh, thought yeah. they said right. that like you get this event, and the faster you do it, like so, if you're more, you should be able to do it in total, like no matter what, depending. I'm guessing on the monster power wherever you're at. But the faster you can do it, or the more effectively you do it, the more resplendent chests you get at the end. I thought that's what uh, Josh had said. Yeah, I don't. These people aren't. I mean, you know, obviously they're still balancing this stuff, but. People were saying maybe there's multiple different versions, and like there's one it's like you know tower defense kind of thing, and then other ones you can like continue advancing, and each time you cross like some line on the ground, another huge horde of monsters will come charging at you, and if it's getting too hard, you just stop doing it, or you know, or, or it's you know you can go you have to do five different waves, and if you you know however fast you do them depends on your reward that kind of thing, so. It's interesting that they're going to be... said many times, you know, it's all still kind of being worked on. It's interesting they're going to be located around the world and not just like something you do from town. You know, I find that kind of interesting. I don't know. Well, I like that they said that the, I guess the story context behind it is the ancient Nephilim left these tests of strength. Oh, that's what it was. Randomly yeah. to test people, you know, to test the other Nephilim around. So that's why you're going to find them randomly. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've been tested by ancient Nephilim in the yeah, Act one thing. Woods. Yeah. <laughs> they just kind of wander around as ghosts and they all die. That wasn't much of a test, to be honest. No, they weren't. So perhaps they've got some tougher ones in West March. You know, it's sad, but I, I always, every time I go through there with a new character, I try to get that achievement for killing all three of them within like five seconds of one another or whatever, and I never can get that dang achievement. <laughs> Wave of force with a wizard. You do it every time. Oh, there you go. I never played a wizard. That's why. <laughs> So, anything else on um, Paragon levels, on Paragon, Sharagon system? The Sharagon system? Um, yes. No, I mean, not until... The only other thing I can't... I don't know, and I don't know if they've said this yet. Do we still continue to get Magic Find, or is that going to be something... Magic Find, Gold Find, or is that something we're going to have to put points in? It's like, well, are we going to default will, to You'll Magic be able to put points in them. It says it under right. utility magic. It's funny in utility. It says here run speed magic find and gold pickup radius. It doesn't say anything about uh, gold find, just gold pickup. So maybe gold find will be in it, but not magic find. It's interesting. Right. I didn't know if like magic find was going to be, you both. know, they they haven't yeah. said yeah or both or, or what or like you know right now it's I you know I have four hundred percent magic find when I run MP six. That's what I know. You know based on my you know, Nephilim Valor and all the rest of that good right. stuff. But, like, what is, does that mean I have to, like, actually divvy points? So is, like, Paragon 2.0 actually going to be a bit of a, and I hate to use this term, but a bit of a nerf to overall stats for an individual character while you're still getting more stats for every other character? Yeah, it might be. To... At least at the lower Hold level the question, of Paragon. Yeah, the, the question I was wondering, movement speed was another one they were talking about, and that's kind of in the same boat as Gold Find and Magic Find in that it has a hard cap. Right. Well, I heard something that they were going to change the hard cap. I don't know if that was just rumor or if, or if they did say that somewhere. No one knows. That's that, that's just lots of. Uh, I've, I've listened to every interview that I've heard thus far. So yeah, every every that's been posted at least that's, that I've seen anyway, and I haven't seen. I mean, even if they said this is how it's going to be, it might change anyway I, before launch. I don't right? think they would have to because you know anybody that has like any like set gear, it's so easy to get to that twenty five percent cap. You know, or close it's, to it. I'm yeah. only like I've never, yeah, I've never actually gotten that. I'm always yeah. at 24. Yeah, 24 yeah. is what I mean, right? But why would you put those points there if you couldn't like go past it? I don't know. Well, to well, compensate. The is, yeah, if if the cap stays at 25, and then you can easily add 10 percent or 13 percent or whatever, then you only need one faster movement item, and that that opens uh, up yeah, more true. options. True. I mean, that's my honestly, that's my favorite part of the Paragon point system. Is as a hardcore player, is the defensive tab. Because there's like I'm crafting, say I'm crafting a hundred chess pieces, which I've been known to do, you know, and I've got this great chess piece that rolled really high on my main stat. It rolled really high on Vit. It's got three sockets. It's got ten percent to life, but it didn't run all resist, all all rest. So I'm like, oh well, shit. I'll just take the points out of vitality that I've got them in my Paragon points and throw them in all res, and then they can compensate for that. That to me is more exciting about the Paragon 2.0 than just being able to raise all the stats. It's because like now I can compensate for like that one piece of gear that if it had rolled a little bit different, I'd still be using it, or you know, so forth and so on. Yeah, and you can respect the points based on a new drop you might get. Oh, this has a ton of all resist on it, and I can take out those points I put in all resist. Right, exactly. You know, yeah, I need a little that's more a nice bit. Way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's really, and especially in hardcore, because I try to balance everything. You know, it's like I want to maintain my 900,000 EHP, I got to maintain my 130,000 DPS. It's like I want to try to get all this stuff, you know, synchronized. And now I can just kind of say, well, now I can compensate. You know, that and the fact that they're. I don't. I don't want to go to the next thing yet. But I was going to say the diamonds, where we can finally socket all resist, is like the best That's thing so I've nice. ever heard. Yeah. So speaking of loot 2.0, we might as well move into that. And also, you're mentioning the, uh, you know, compensating. We're going to have the mystic is able to do enchants now, and it'll change one affix. Which one be thing difference. I haven't seen about the mystic is, let's say you get your roll, you get your item, and you re-roll it once from like you get. You know thorns, and you want to change, and, and then you want to change it to crit chance, but you don't get it. Can you roll it again? Can can you keep doing it, or can you only do it once? Have they said that? Before the game, when the mystic was in there, you could re-roll the same one many, many times. Right, but they didn't say. But they, have, or they not. haven't said currently. It, it seems like they would have to. I'm gonna assume you know, that you can roll it as many times. One bad luck, you, you never get another chance. Yeah, yeah. It's just I, a count bound. I mean, that's the beauty of it. It's like once you right. roll it once, it's a count bound, so it's out of the. You know, it's out of the auction house. It's out of the economy, I guess you could say. You know, people oh, like so to talk about the downside. Economy. Right. Okay. Right. That's you know, the, the second you enchant it, it's buying an account. So I'm assuming you can do whatever the hell you want with it at that point. Yeah, that's a good point. And is this going to result in every single person having a bunch of super, super quality gear with buying an account and no one never trading anymore? Um. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really I mean, think I don't, it will? I don't. Th 
I don't see very. I was looking at my gear now, like that's on my monk, and I can't think of any piece of gear that I wouldn't enchant just to make it that little bit better. So I'd get something. I mean, I'm assuming if like I have a thousand, you know, whatever the new one. But if I have a, I have a thousand DPS axe. So if I find a 990, I'll put it up on the auction house. But if I find something better, I'm gonna enchant it and try to make it even, you know, more better or whatever you well, want. Well, sure, I agree with that. But <laughs> there's no way it would take out the trading in the auction house and like I think it'll make. Oh it no, dead no, dead, no. But... There's some people that only play the game for the auction house, you know, and that's like why they play the game. So, I mean, it, it'll be a nice boost, but it by no means will change the face of the, the auction well, house. Well, and that's the biggest thing I'm excited about, too, is with the whole smart loot. And then Josh has said numerous times again, and I've said it on the first podcast that was on you, the game should be about finding loot, not buying loot. Oh, absolutely. You know? So yep. this whole, like, smart drop system and then, you know, maybe I'll find, you know, I'm more likely to get stuff that I could use. It, it really, like, keys on to me because it's like i prefer to never use the auction house besides Absolutely. to get rid of stuff yeah. if i ever needed to so you like to use it so other people can buy your stuff you don't want to do the other way around well it's the stuff isn't up there is ridiculous i mean it's like i go on there every once in a while i'm like oh i crafted everything i can like everything that's possibly crafted i'm wearing crafted in my gear so i'm like okay well let me see if i can upgrade my chest oh that's 450 million gold i'm like i don't want to <laughs> spend 450 million gold on a night even though i'm sitting on you know half a billion i don't want to spend that you know blow my entire, all of it yeah on one, right. on one item i don't think it's worth especially in hardcore where i could die tomorrow and lose it all you have to spend gold to make gold yeah i'm happy where i'm at <laughs> so the mystic thing we don't know the details exactly it seems like they wouldn't let you re-roll i mean josh said specifically in an interview i listened to just today he said you can pick one affix that you want on the item and then re-roll it and you might get the same thing again. Who knows? Maybe they rule that one out. But I'm assuming you can't go through an item and re-roll every single affix on it, you know, one after the other. Yeah, just one. It seems, is, it seems yeah. like that would be just like two tailor-made. To well, maybe you, you can pick what you want. Like maybe you can say, I want to re-roll But only this. once ever, though, I would think. Well, I know. But if they said, you know, say like to use uh, Junior Mint's examples, like say it rolled thorns and you're saying, okay, I'd really like to have this rolled vit, you know, so let me have the – the mystic, you know, put vit on it, you know, as a change yeah. this to vit as opposed to change this to random, you know, affix. And it might take you 20 chances to get vit, but then I don't think you'd then be able to go or change another affix vit? on it or something else. Or can else. you pick vit? I mean, can there be a list? That's like, what I was going to say is, can you only do the secondary stats? Can you not get the primary stats? I wonder if that they'll... they'll... I think everything's randomized on Diablo 3 and they want you to, to do this 20 times to get a good item. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, that's a good way to keep, you know, all the reagents or whatever they're going to use out of the you know or moving through your yeah, he said he said there's a crafting cost and a gold cost and a new one is chosen at random so it'll cost you some materials it might cost you you know a demonic essence every time to do it something like that yeah they're definitely keeping demonic essences did they say that, that nothing is confirmed uh, but he said it would, it would cost crafting materials so okay. that's what all the current stuff costs he just say maybe and put be... his arms up in the air <laughs> that was a different interview but yeah i know i know, I know. <laughs> I think an interesting thing will be if you're looking for stuff in the auction house. I mean, say you roll, I don't know, random, you know, rare bracers, and it's got 160, 150 main stat vit, and res all, and armor, and regen, but doesn't have critical hit, hit chance, which is like the mandatory roll on a bracer at right. this point, right? Right. That would be like an awesome bracer in the new system. Right. You just you can reroll whatever crappy mod until you get critical hit chance. Well, exactly. You've got like a billion gold items. How many times have you been rolling along, picking up an item, and you go, God, this thing would be awesome if it only had bleh. You know, if it only yeah, had so this gonna... item, you know, then now you just made it awesome now. Yeah, we have to retrain our brains to look for everything though, because I'm used to just discard, you know, discarding tons of stuff. I don't even you know, pick oh, up no, anything. No, no socket trash, you know, that kind of thing on a night on a weapon. And you'll have to start thinking now, okay, this, is a, this would be a fantastic item if it had you know, be a better main stat or something like that. And then you're like, oh my god, I want this now. So we're, and then the other funny thing, how do you search for that in the auction house? You know, it's going to be like, <laughs> like you're used to looking for, you know, if you're looking for, a, I mean, whatever, you know, gloves or something now, you're always going to look at like the trifecta and then whatever else. But maybe now the best gloves in the world will not have any, you know, won't have critical hit chance, which you would always search for on a current pair of gloves. Well, yeah, you can just because search for three. Get ones, you can switch it. Just search well, you, for three qualities out of the four, and then, you know, just yeah. find the cheapest one and pick that and then just re-roll it. You know? Or you do what we do now. It's like you search for the best, and then, okay, I can't find it, or it's too expensive. Let me drop a property. Exactly. And that yeah. piece, and then, okay, now I can make this the best. I only buy the best. Oh. I don't know. How it works. <laughs> Great coupon for me all the way across Seriously. the board. It's funny, I just recently rolled, I was rolling a bunch of vid amulets, and I got an absolutely spectacular roll, and it's missing one stat that'll make it perfect. 
it's like a really high trifecta and it's you know it's 220 vit and it's got mf and cold resistance and there's no stat i'm like if i could change that cold resistance into like any stat at all it would immediately be the best ammo I've ever seen for any of my classes. See, I'm a cold res monk, yeah. so I, I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> you'd like it. Yeah. Well, you'd re-roll the magic find to try to get something else, try to get dexterity or something. Yeah, but, I don't need it anymore. But yeah, I mean, I, I just I, have, I happen to have this one item. It's, it's on my witch, it's on my uh, demon hunter now, so it's it's retired basically. But in theory, but I mean, you know, it's it's a vit it's a vit thing, and it rolled five random mods, and and three of them are spectacular, and one of them's okay, and one of them sucks. I love so let me uh, devil's advocate for a minute here with this with the new loot. So how they said there's going to be all this less loot dropping, which is obviously a good thing. But then they said in the previous instance where you would get one legendary, now you're going to get six legendaries. So with you getting a not guaranteed, but on average six legendaries per loot run, I mean, how soon does that become that they've almost just taken legendaries and almost done the opposite and made them not as good? I don't know. It's I think it's interesting. I don't think they. I hope they're. I hope they're talking it up more than it's going to be, just to yeah. get us excited. That just seems like a lot of legendaries to get in a run. Not really. I mean, if you think back to, and I, you know, pull back D two, but I mean, D two it was like one in a couple hundred thousand to get a drop, and D three it feels like it's one in a couple million to get this chance for a drop. So I mean, yeah. maybe they're just increasing the percentage. Because I'll do. I mean, I'm P six or P fifty six, and I run my monk in MP five, and I'll do a full act one clear and not find a legendary. I mean, it's the most. Annoy- yeah, and I'm over 400 magic find. It's like, come on, I, I can't find one legendary in this entire run. You're so. not anywhere near max on your character then, I guess, because uh-uh. you'd be 500. Yeah, because my look, I'm mostly doing MP4, and I think it's 475, and I find lots of legendaries lately. I'm just over 400 with my magic yeah. win- and my enchantress with MP4 and yeah. MP5. I'm, well, I'm be, honestly surprised. You know, there's 25 levels there, so and then you'll be then you'll be there. Yeah, no, well, that's well, I keep that saying high. that to myself. I'm like. P50. I'll, I'll get. I'll have the magic find at P50 to start finding a lot of legendaries. And I'm like at P40. I was like, oh yeah, I'll do it at P40. Now it's like, okay, at P60 I'll do it. And then at P60 I'll be like, okay, at P70 I'll definitely be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Most people I talk to over level 400 or uh, magic find 400 get a lot of legendary drops. I'm surprised to hear. You I'm. I. It's just recently, over the last probably week or so, it's like I've gotten six legendaries and I've put on five paragon levels to put it in you know perspective. Or yeah. six parallel levels. So that's one of the things they've said. I did this whole legendary item drop survey thing in a main page post and the forum post some time ago asking people, you know, where do you find the most? What experience, you know, what magic find do you think it's good? What are your main complaints? And almost everybody's main complaint was that either they don't find enough now or too many of them are really crappy quality or you never find a damn thing until you're like magic find 300. And so one of the things that Josh said specifically in these interviews is we're really boosting the, the legendaries you find as you level up in the first place. And I posted a little uh, hands-on report a guy wrote today, and he said they found a legendary right away in their game, testing it at Gamescom. Oh. So it seems like all those bosses, when you're first in you know, normal nightmare hell, they just drop you like two rares, you know, the Skeleton King and Mag and everybody right. else. It's going to be a really good chance of getting a legendary now from those. Well, they so at least you'll see pre- them and get a taste for legendaries before you're, you know, before you're Paragon 70. Well, every new story boss you kill, they said, will drop a guaranteed legendary every time you kill a new boss, too. So, you know, there's that as well. Really? So it's D2 all over again. Yeah, yeah that, they, that was in the, yeah, they said that. So, But what I wonder is... I mean, I think it has to be this way, but like, so you kill your bosses in normal, you get legendaries each time, and then when you kill them again in Nightmare and Hell, do you still get up the legendaries guaranteed each time? Or just, yes, yeah. every single time. I would think it has forever. to be. Yeah, right. Jay Wilson's spinning in his grave right now. Well, I love the one. I mean, speaking of Jay Wilson spinning in his grave, I mean, this is the 180 they've done from the beta talks. It's like, it seems like, no, we don't want stat points. Okay, we're going to give you Paragon stat points. No, we legend. We don't want legendaries to be that good. We want rares to be the best things that can roll in the game. No, no, we want legendaries to be amazing. It's like, you know, they've just, you know, yeah. we're not going to have random. It's like everything that they've said, no, 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 we don't like that from D2. They've finally come back and said, oh, okay, okay, we like it. We're, we're going to let you guys have it. It's just going to be D2 Lord of Destruction by the end here, right? That's fine with me. So are you guys writing jo- Josh in a big heart on your notebooks now in school? I like the guy. I can't help but not. How could you not like the guy? I mean, I've watched every interview with him, and I, wa- and I don't want to put, like, Jay Wilson up on a, you know, crucify him up on a cross over here, but he's just so much more personable. He's just so yeah, he's- much more, you know, he's so much more informative. It just, he seems so excited about the game. Like, every time he talks about it, he's like, he's like really into it and really excited, and he's like, oh, we're check out this thing, and, you know, when I play, it really drives me nuts, and I want to change it over here. We're like, Every time you saw Jay Wilson, he just looked tired. 
He just looked tired and beat yeah, up and exhausted. like, yeah, exhausted. And like, he didn't want to say it again. Yeah, we're going to have salvaging stuff. It's over there. And yeah, we really didn't like this. So we're not doing it, you know, and that kind of thing. Do you, do you think it's like super awkward when they see each other in the hall at Blizzard? Josh walks by, <laughs> he's like, hey, man, you really suck. <laughs> I think that people liked Jay a lot in like 2008, and it definitely hard to been doing the game for like four years. And then by like 2009 and 10 and 11, it's just like the weight of it and expectations and the amount of time they've been in grind mode. Yeah. So we'll see how perky and chipper Josh looks in 2016, you know? But obviously it's a good idea to bring in some fresh blood and have a new project lead at this point. Well, and plus the expansions have energy. to be easier than the original game. I mean, because then they're just, you know, modifying what already exists versus yeah. b building something from scratch. Yeah. That's what and he came in to do the console, and that that was finished, and it's moved out. And now he's it's like he's already accomplished something. You know, it took it took Jay six years to accomplish anything because Diablo three took so long to make. So one nice thing, speaking of console, that came out of the interviews is I like that Josh confirmed that this is not going to have console release at the beginning, so all their focus is just going to be on PC. I think that's really bodes well for the expansion. Yeah, well, I think they want to see how well the console version does too first. Well, it's just nice that all man hours of the D3 team is going into one release. You know, they're not splitting themselves up, which I think will make the game come out sooner and be a higher quality. So. Well, don't say that the forum ragers will get all mad with you. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the things that I, I, was, I was very persistent asking Josh and Wyatt when I interviewed them was about, is the console a test bed for, for, for Loop 2.0? You know, they weren't calling it Loop 2.0 at that point, but... You know, I, you know, the no-auction house, the better rares, fewer rares, all that kind of stuff. Is this what you're testing for the Diablo 3 in the future? And they were like, well, you know, maybe we have ideas. And I thought it, that was probably the case, but obviously they've confirmed a lot of these console features for Diablo 3 expansion long before the console's even out. Yeah. So it's not like they were going to wait two months of the console and see what the fans thought and then make their decisions. They could obviously change course, but... They must have done a lot of testing for the console and thought, this works pretty well, we're going to put this in the PC game, and we're just going to say, you know, it's in. Boom. Well, Smart Loot is probably one of the best things that they've come up with. And, I mean, and, and that was the number one complaint. I mean, if you read the forums, that's what most people complain about. You know, I mean, even with these Ironborn characters, which is really popular right now, I'm going to go through hardcore and I'm only going to do self-found. The amount of stuff that they actually found that, and the how far they can actually progress is so limited to the average player that it you know starts to put things in perspective you know that this stuff is really isn't dropping you can't just play the game without using the auction house and i think that started to hit home for them i'm hoping at least it did so why don't you tell us what smart drops are uh, let me think you just mentioned it smart Here, drops a... are item rolled let's see smart drop item rolled item affixes are relevant to current played class smart drop item affixes are preceded by a yellow circle they bind on account which I didn't understand that bind on account part that's well, from a cheat sheet <laughs> it's apparently that you know if the, it must designate it in a tooltip on the gear that says this is smart drop and you can't sell it on the auction house it's only to you you know, that I mean, that might so it's be automatically it BOA. You pick it up, it's BOA. It doesn't. You can't touch it. Based on that quote you read, yes, I, I haven't seen anything. I haven't personally seen that quote, but if that's what it says, that it's bind on account when you pick it up, then I assume that's what that means. Yeah, I've got. I haven't heard that. I've just heard them talk about what's going to be on it. It sounds like the only thing that changes is whatever main stat it rolls. It doesn't sound like it's really that big a difference, but maybe there's more to it. And, and how often is it going to do it? That's whole. That's one thing that. I mean, the stuff. The other stuff about Loot 2.0 interests me more. I think Smart Drop is, I'll believe it when I see it personally. But how, how often have you been playing and you found items? Like, this would be awesome if it only had strength instead of Dex, and oh, you were playing course. with a barbarian. Yeah, every all I, mean, the time. I never find that. I mean, you'll find an item, but do you think? Do you even really care if it's for your current class? I guess if you're doing some big Ironborn thing, you would care. But well, I mean, I, I mean I'm just I'm just looking at gear and saying, okay, this would be great if it had two other stats, and it never does. Well, yeah. that's because you're looking to sell it. And supposedly yeah, or, or use it, it on a different. Or I mean, I have all five classes. So, right. Well, all four. I don't play a wizard because no one plays wizards. But I mean, other than that. Well, see, for me, I mean, I personally, I'd love to find an upgrade. Like to actually find an upgrade. I'd be like, you know, I've never actually found. And I've always used the auction house, so I agree. It's it's really important. You know, next to impossible. But you know, when you're sitting here grinding along, you're like, okay, I'm at P60. I'd love to find an upgrade. Like just find an upgrade that would be like wow i got a new item i just found it let me go try it out and see how it works like that's got to be the best feeling ever which i've yeah, never experienced in d3 i think that's their biggest motivator in the loot 2.0 like that's exactly what they're going for what you just said yeah 
So finding upgrades for your current, I, I'm just happy to find good gear because then either I can sell it or give it to another class. But well, see, I'm they just they diminish the whole selling part, you know, or the need to buy things. No, I shouldn't say that they diminish the smell. I'm hoping they diminish the need to buy or the need to feel like you have to buy everything. Yes, that, yes. D3 has conditioned us to just say, oh, is this something I can sell versus is this something I can use? And I think that's what the expansion needs to fix. We need to look at a drop and say, wow, I can use this versus, wow, I can sell this. You know, that's what they need to achieve. Yeah, and I mean, I remember when the day that D3 came out, we were all playing and everybody's sitting there and you're leveling, you're rushing to 60 as fast as you can and we're all having a good time and it was, it, it, dawned on me how different it was from D2 and I don't like, you know, D2 wasn't the end all be all but we didn't trade things anymore everything was like, we were all in mumble and we're all talking about it, we're like, oh I found this I'll give you a bro deal on it, you know like I won't charge you what I will charge the auction house I'll charge you a little bit less and then I'll give it to you so it was like, even then it was like, okay I'm going to sell it to my friends as opposed to oh you need this here, let me give you this item and you just give me an item later, you know there wasn't that op the option out there yeah, I remember that first day. Even not even bro deals. Just like you're in, you're in your group. Oh, I got this blue sword. I got this blue crossbow. Can you use this? Can you use that? I mean, that was the best. Uh, you know, I I can't wait. You know, for that with the expansion, it's gonna be incredible. I sold Xanth the flawless star amethyst for a million less than retail. Does that count? Yeah. <laughs> it's a pro deal. So you gave him a pro deal. <laughs> well, right after he hit P100, I'm like, what do you do now? He said, Well, first of all, I'm taking this ruby out of my hat. I'm like, Well, that would be a good choice, I guess. <laughs> He's trying to find a replacement for his Hellfire ring too, obviously. But, but yeah, he's like, oh, I have a rubies. I don't have any gems. I'm like, well, I have six of you know whatever the level above star is of amethyst. I'm like, I'll just craft three of those. And he looks on the auction house and it was 14.2 million or something. I said, I'll give it to you for 13. And there it was, bro deal. Yeah, you see, you gave him bro deal, see. Yeah, and we do that right in the game on the live feed, so it was really exciting for everyone, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so we need to get a little bit about the Crusader, and that's going to be our last topic for this podcast, I think. All right. Saving some material for number two. So what did you guys think? What was your first impression of the Crusader Junior Mint? Did you love it at first sight? Yes, I did. I said, put it into my veins right now, you know. <laughs> Is it because, was it because Joshy Washi showed it to you? That I, like, like Mug said, he has some, uh, he has some charisma, you know. He, he's good at selling things, but uh, I, I don't know. Like, the bar, like, I have a barb and it's leveled up, but that class just never really clicked with me. I think the whole Paladin Crusader field definitely clicks with me more and oh my goodness when i saw that falling sword ability the first time i just was like give this to me immediately that ability looks so cool you know you turn you turn into a sword and fall on them yeah. so yeah I, uh, I i don't know what i'll be doing first when the expansion hits but i might be creating the crusader first that might be the first thing i do so what did you think when you saw it, Muggs? Uh, I thought every single hardcore player on the planet probably just wet themselves, and they're all going to be playing <laughs> Crusaders because it's it's a big shield. You're like, you know, you got the best of a monk and a shield and all the damage of a barb. But at least that's what it looked like. You know, and their description of it was like a tank with artillery that just moves through the battlefield and can't be killed, can't be this. I'm like, oh, that's everybody's going to be rolling. It's going to be the new Witch Doctor, you know, when you go into Looks a hardcore game. Yeah. You mean the new Barbarian? That's all you see in hardcore games now. I only see Witch Doctors. I don't, in yeah. the P, MP4s, MP5s, all I see, everybody's a Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor, Witch Doctor, Witch Doctor, Witch Doctor. So It's ironic because I thought I was not real impressed with the Crusader. I'm like, eh, it looks like a monk or a Barbarian. And I was like, I've seen this a lot in the games. It looks actually a lot like my monk that I'm used to playing. It does. And I, and I realized after a couple of days, I was, people were, you know, there were very divergent opinions on this. And I'm like, that's because I play hardcore. Because I see characters with shields all the time. My main is a monk with a shield, and I see barbs with shields all the time. If, and, you know, the developers were like, he's got a shield that's wildly new. You never see this in the game. I'm like, well, in softcore, yeah. Yeah, so I was exactly. <laughs> from the softcore POV, you know, all the monks and barbs are either dual wielding or using scorns and just, like, charging through at 1,000 miles an hour and stuff. I think it was so great. So that's why I was... I was that's why I was curious that you're playing soft card, Junior Mint. So is it is it really novel to you to see someone with a shield? You know that I was just going to say that that is a part of what it is, and I was you know that was the second thing that occurred to me after the, my emotion to put it into my veins was oh they're in, they're making you use a shield because I thought okay first thing someone's going to do is get two swords or two axes and say never use a shield again. But then they said, no, the shield is going to add to your offense. And I was like, oh, good. So now there's going to be a reason to use one again. So, yeah, I, I liked it a lot. And especially that there's specific Crusader shields I think is really cool. So you're not just going to have to use the same shield as everyone else. It's neat. So. And I hope they had some more shields in general. It sucks the only decent legendary shield is a storm shield, and it's only good for barbs. The it's, ivory it's, tower. it's lame as a monk. 
Yeah, great, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you missed part where I said good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean for followers. I mean for characters. No, actually, the uh, the, the crafted one can be really good too. The um, Hallow Hallow Defender. Yeah, I have one of those. Yeah, those can be really good roles, but. But anyway, yeah, so I was just like, well, I've seen this before, and I was actually not that excited about it because I've got, you know, my monk I've played a billion hours with, and I'm, I'm just going to start a bard pretty soon. I've been talking about it and planning some gear, and that's going to be a sword and board. And, you know, I'm like, oh, great, now I have three sword and boards once the Crusader's out. But I mean, I'm still interested in the class and stuff. It just it didn't seem that novel and different to me because I think I'm used to seeing shields and stuff. But, but I do wield so, in hardcore. Yeah, not for long. So, uh, <laughs> but how about the uh, how about the lore and the story and the? I mean, yeah, I thought his appearance was a little was a little drab. You know, they said it's a knight in battle scarred armor is what they're saying. It's not the paladin. The story so wasn't that good. I, I mean, like, what what story? Well, the the fact that he's like you know like they're the elite crusade. You know, they're the elite of the paladins and like they're the best of the best. You know, I was running through hardcore just the other day, leveling up a new court character, and I'm like listening to Cormac like run his mouth constantly through the whole thing, and I'm like, I really hope the crusader has like just puts Cormac down and puts him in his place and just shuts him up. So I'm hoping there's like at least something something along those lines in there. I thought the armor he was hope. in looked really cool personally with the you know the gold helmet and the with the black or with the gold and the black. I don't know. Uh, I thought it looked really cool personally, but but then I thought to myself, you start at level one and you're probably going to be there in your loincloth and leather for like ten levels anyway. How long till you're going to have gear that looks that way? So, <laughs> well, he looks like somebody from the Holy Grail. Yeah, he looks like the Black Knight. He gets all yeah. his arms cut off. Yeah, right. That's exactly what it looks like. Just a flesh wound. <laughs> the lore I was really like. This is. It seemed like it was underthought. It just seemed like in the, the initial presentation, you know, the last three new classes we got had a whole little cinematic movie about them. And it was like, here's what they do, and here's their lore, and here's their 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 battle scar dialogue and stuff. And this guy just sort of sort of snuck in there when all the main presentation was about Act Five and Malthiel and stuff. Well, yeah, maybe they were we just haven't seen like, it yet. Yeah, I mean, and they've had a little more since then. But I, I liked the little tidbit they said that the, I think um, Kevin Martin said this in an interview that the, the difference is that the um, it's almost like the Jedi Knight kind of thing where each each master has an apprentice. Yeah, the Sith like Lords. One, yeah, it's all that. Like a mini crusader. <laughs> And like when yeah, he he travels around like your valet or whatever and learns from you and trains and if you die he takes up the shield and becomes the new master kind of thing. It was kind of funny how in every interview it, all the German people at Gamescom were like, "All right, Josh, it's just a paladin, right?" And he was like, "No," and explained it again. I think I heard that like at least three or four times. They were like, "It's just a paladin, right?" And he's like, "No." <laughs> so I found that kind of funny. Germans don't take no for an answer. I no, do like don't. the fact that he can hold a two-hander in one hand. Yeah, it's a nice passive for that. And I'm well, wondering... Well, it reduces their movement speed by 10% is the way that's set up right now. There was a two-hander and then with a shield, and it reduces your movement speed by 10%, yeah. which... If only there was some sort of new Paragon thing you could over offset yeah. that. Way. Oh, right. there you go, right. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes Maybe me there's... wonder what they're going to do for the other classes, you know, with the new passives and new stuff that's supposed to come uh, I can't out. wait to see that. I hope we see and that maybe at there's a Maybe there's a really cool paladin shield. Paladin shield, not crusader. <laughs> no, in Germany, they, no flux. It's, it's a crusader, not a paladin. And maybe it's got faster run on it, so you can pair the two up. And he uses monk's bunk too. Don't forget. Well, just for now. <laughs> was, did they say that was just for now? Every other carrot class when it first debuted basically just had mana for a resource. Uh, it's just, yeah. it, it said it, it regens by itself. It's called well, it's, it was called yeah, it's called something else, but it works like mana. Right, right, right. And so I, I think that I would be shocked if that's how it is in the final game. Somebody asked, is it the same as the Barbarian's resource? And he said no. But it seems like it'll be something kind I mean, of, maybe it's a hybrid between them or something. There's only the so many ways to the... generate a resource. You either generate it by hitting stuff or you just generate it over time. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, but we've, I, I just think that, plus they, they, they fine-tune things for the demos to make it easier to play for noobs. And you can just jump in. They don't want you sitting there waiting for your resource to refill when you've got 15 minutes to play after you waited in line for four hours. Exactly, you know? yeah. So they like they just want to throw everything out there. They, they turn up the drop rates. They turn up the, the numbers of bosses, and you, they just want you to have, have a really good time for 15 minutes. And it's not necessarily. Real? In fact, you can almost be sure it's not going to be exactly like the final game. I really wonder if other classes are going to be able to use flails. I, I wonder if or if it's going to be like a barb weapon and like you know the equivalent of a barb weapon. You mean like the sickle that nobody uses? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the mighty weapon. Yeah, the mighty weapon. The sickles. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do wonder the thing we didn't mention about loot drops, where they're they're now scaling up and down legendaries. That so, is I mean, awesome. Yeah. That is. But the problem awesome. is, the thing is, as I posted in this whole survey thing, you know, people find like one out of every fifteen unique helms is a mempo, and you, ever, you know, and eleven of them are Andariel's helms, 
And then there's, you know, you can also get, because the way the game rolls stuff is it says, okay, here's a legendary helm. What are the possibilities? And there's like three monk helms and two witch doctor helms and two wizard helms. And, you know, then there's Endarials, and then there's multiple potential options, and only one of which is the Mimpo, which is why you find so few of those. And the same thing with Witching Hour, because there's also Mighty Belts, and there's a bunch of set belts in the same slot. And that's why well, it's... Don't forget, so they're giving be... you a 500% increase in, in drops. Oh. Yeah, but so now we're going to have 50 potential helms, and it's going to say, okay, what are the odds you ever get any specific helm that you want? It's going to be Madstone's Paving Tristram again, I think. I'm, I'm wondering how that's going to work out. That's I think true. it's worse that, like, what if you're level 70 and then you get, like, a level 20 legendary drop? I mean, No, 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 they're going to be your level. Well, you will, but it'll be scaled up in yeah. theory. So. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I missed that. So you'll yeah. find, yeah, you'll find, like, level 2 and level 10 and level 20 legendaries at, at level 60, but that, in theory the stats will be scaled up to be appropriate. Well, and there, But there are a bunch. I remember saying this when the game came out, too. I'm like, there's a bunch of really good legendaries at low level that we're never going to see, that we're never going to use, that we're never going to... The artists put all this effort into making them look different and unique, and you never actually see them, you never use them, they're not worth it. You know? Unless it's Leoric Signet, which gives right. you not only... Or arcane set. That's pretty much it, you know? Well, like, you know, like they got the homoculus, or what's that shield? Yeah. The lidless, is it the lidless wall? Lidless eye. Is that what you're... Lidless wall, yeah, with all the, with all the skulls yeah, on it. Yeah, I mean, that's a great shield. If that was scaled up to the max level, that'd be a great shield, you know? Because it's got attack speed, and it's got all kinds of good well, stuff. That's a big if. How many legendaries now are, are max level are any good, though? So, well, yeah, obviously we're hoping that... Potential to be a better shield. Huh? At the same time, yeah, though, hoping... you want to see, like, new level 70 legendaries, too. Like, I'd be a little disappointed if I get five legendaries in a run and they're all scaled up low-level ones. You know, I'd want a new one. Right. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that may be the case. We don't know how it's going to work out, but... And just given the problems we've had in legendaries in Diablo 3, I mean, it's, I, I, we, obviously we want to trust the guys that they've learned from their mistakes and stuff, but... Well, they claim you know, they play the been, game. That's the big spot. thing. I mean, they claim they yeah. play the If they actually play the game, then, yeah, I could see it happening. It's not, well, we've never actually played this, and we just doubled it, you know, which is the famous, you know, saying. It's we If they actually play the game, then they have to understand. Yeah, but if they're just creating a vertical understand. slice, if they're just creating a vertical slice of this small part of Act 5, they can create that small slice to drop whatever they want it to drop. I mean, once it's a full release, I think there's still a lot to test. Okay, so we need to wrap this up. We've saving stuff for podcast two. So, if the Diablo three expansion was releasing tomorrow, Junior Mint, what do you do first? Crusader, get level sixty one with your main, start hardcore. Crusader, level one Crusader, hardcore or softcore? Um, maybe I'll go hardcore. I, you know, I gotta, I gotta get my feet into hardcore. And then you get to level twenty two, and something bad happens, and you have to start over again. No. And then I get softcore. <laughs> Male or female? Uh, actually, female. I like the way the female one looks. You like the Buffy, Buffy the Seder? Buffy yeah. the Vampire Slayer? Yeah, yeah. good call, yeah. <laughs> okay, same question to you, Muggs. Um, are we encountering a bunch of Error 37s and and log and, and whatever, it's lag perfect, and all the rest of the stuff? It's a perfect like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like your fantasy very much. Yeah. <laughs> if there's no lag, then I'll, I'll probably take my Monk right to 70 and then go back and play a Crusader in Hardcore. What if your Monk dies at 64? Then I start. Well, that's just like my monk died at 64 anyway. I just start over. That's the beauty of hardcore. You get to play it again. Yeah, it's gonna be weird because you're you're getting downgraded. You know, you're you're gonna be paragon 80 or something by that point, and it's like, hey, now you're only level 60. You're not paragon anything anymore. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, but it'll be easy because then they can like take all those little points. Of you have, and... Yeah, you have you have paragon points. Yeah. but I mean, but I mean, you've gained. You know, if you're level 80, you've gained you know 240 main stat and 160 vitality. Yeah, but I mean, and I've if, seen you the if you don't immediately. Yeah, if you don't offset with that with your Paragon points, you're actually going to be a weaker character. Maybe you put all that into, you know, you put all that into crit or something because you're greedy, or you put all that into movement speed because you want to run an 87 percent faster run. Oh, I love it. It's like huh, suddenly I'm suddenly why it's, you'd be like, why do I have 5,000 fewer hit points than I used to? It's like, well, you, but you have more options. Right. Well, I know I definitely agree with that, but I'm still happier to have those options. And with the way I've done enough Blizzard games and seen the way they've like when they do a 10 level jump. The way the loot changes and the way the DPS goes up, that I'm not even worried about the stuff that I have because I know I'll find better along the way. Yeah, level 61 blue is probably going to be like godly compared to a level 60 uh, orange. Yeah, it completely. So, yeah, probably by the time you hit 65, you'll replace all your gear. So, yep. yeah, that's another question I was going to get into. I guess we can go into that briefly here. Try not to run 20 minutes on this, but 
you know, people, some people are excited about that. Some people are like, this is sucks. I've paid billions of gold for my really good gear, and now it's all going to be crap by the time I'm level 65. It's like, I, is that just, I'm fine with I, that. I, just figured that's, I figured you just expect that in expansion. That's just how it goes. Well, exactly. I mean, we saw that in D2 and D2X. You didn't use any of the stuff from D2. I've seen it in every other Blizzard game, and I just look right. at like a forced ladder reset. Like, okay, their Blizzard's just saying, okay, everybody gets this on a new ladder. We're going to reset the playing field. You get to go. You don't want to level, you can stay where you're at. If you want to level here, and this is where the, this is the new area to go and play in. It's such a silly complaint. People always say that in WoW. I was a long time WoW player, and it's like, oh, this just came out, and all these epics are now useless in two levels. It's like, yeah, it's a brand new expansion. It's it's just a silly complaint. Well, you play an RPG to I don't know. For me, I find it, I play an RPG to find loot. So if I can find all new exactly. loot, that yes. even makes it all new, exciting. You know, like all more fun. Yes. Well, you have, I see you guys have a lot of sympathy for the complainers on this topic. Yeah, I do no not. sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> I've played enough Blizzard games throughout the years, and I'm just kind of used to it. And every expansion's like that. Hey, we're gonna. Here's your new stuff. Is, is the old stuff any good? Nah, not really. Okay. <laughs> to put a vote up on that this week, so I'm curious because the number a couple of people are like outraged by it. like this is terrible. They shouldn't. I'm like. Imagine if they put an expansion out and there wasn't a new tier of gear and there weren't monsters that were any harder that would require you to get better gear to kill them. People would be a little more upset by that, I think, than having to replace their mimpos. I yeah, would. Just yeah. the expansion then, guys. I'm sure Blizzard won't miss I you. I mean, I guess if you just spent $85 on a mempho, you might be upset, but other than that, I can't really see a If reason. you're spending $85 on a real money auction house for one item, then you deserve to lose it. I'm sorry. Ooh, controversial. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if the expansion's coming out in two months, obviously it's not. But I mean, say it, it, you know, say it's next, it's next June, and the expansion's coming out in two months. Do you stop buying any gear in the, in the auction house? Do you start saving all your? And do you sell everything off because all your items are going to be have no value once the expansion? I've already out? sold everything off. I've already sold everything except for what I'm wearing. What'd you put the money into? Do you, are you just having gold? Yeah, I'm just hoarding gold. But what if gold becomes devalued? Shouldn't you buy gems? Shouldn't you be trying to guess what's going to no, be good? No, because every person that's trying to get like all these idiots out there that go, I just bought a whole bunch of fiery brimstone, but now the market dropped to shit, and now they're worth nothing. I don't want to be that person. I'd rather just have gold. In hardcore, it's not as bad as in softcore, but um, I'd rather just have gold. My one concern is right now we see, what, 4,000 gold piles along the ground, about yeah. three yeah. to fours, that we're going to see like 20s. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the expansion, like and it's 10, a, you, know? you know, or like tens or twenties, and like you know, everybody's gonna be a billionaire pretty soon, or whatever it is. No, just in billion, economy, it's a new million. You know? Yeah, I think that's so, the last... scariest parts of the expansion actually is to see how much items are gonna be selling for in that first week. God, it's gonna be like ridiculous. Yeah, the first person that finds any new legendaries, like you know, five hundred billion, and it's worth nothing a week later, but it'll be fun. To... Yeah, no kidding. So speaking of, last thing, Blizzard said they're hoping for 2014 for release, and Josh, in an interview, said hoping to start the beta later this year, which seems very optimistic, but who knows, right? So what is your, what is your guess, uh, Junior Mint? I th- beta starts and release date. I, I, I'd say beta um, by the end of November. To, you know, to... what, what year is that? <laughs> beta by the end of November this year. 2013, Yeah, huh? beta November 2013. And release July 2014. A bold wow. prediction on yeah. one of those, anyway. What do, what do you think? Uh, I say 1.09. So because we're getting this stuff early, right after BlizzCon, I so they're going to let us test that. I'm going to say beta February, January, late January, early February 2014, and I'm going to say release summer 2014. So you think he's gonna get? They're gonna go against Josh and not release in 2013, even though he said a definitive yes in the expan- in their interview. Well, I don't know what they mean for beta. I mean, is beta gonna yeah. be 1.09? Is that considered beta, or is it actually gonna give us beta? Like, okay, here we go, play. Um, well, the uh, way WoW works is they'll do a beta, like you know, for six months or a year or whatever. But then a month or so before the expansion releases, they'll do the 1.09 equivalent, and it'll be like for a month before the expansion comes out, and then the expansion. Uh, so, yeah. I, I I think that's that would be how it works. But I want the well, 1.09 fat soon. Like that's what I'm hoping for. Oh, we I all care do, less. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's good to want things. Yes. I mean, you get them. What's your so there there were there are two key words. The the question. The questioner asking about the beta did not say public beta. He said beta. Right. And Josh did not say will. He said hope. So, no. The question given, was, it, will the beta Blizzard come runs out? betas for six months internally before they go public. They could uh, be in the public beta. Yeah. They could be in the private beta now, and we wouldn't know about That's it. I mean, I don't think they are. Yeah. 
But I mean, they were in the private beta for months, and then it's only friends and family for like, you know, friends and family and some media for like a month or two, and then finally it goes to public. Yeah, you're so right. they, they could start, you know, December 29th, they could start friends and family internal beta, and we know about it, but that could run until March right. so what's your yeah. before they actually expand it to people. So I, I think that's a really almost a useless information. I mean, obviously, it's better than not being in the beta test, but... And Josh, of course, said hope. That doesn't mean will, you know. Yeah. They ho- they hope to get the, you know, as I said before we started recording, you know, Q second half 2011 was what they hoped for Diablo 3's release, and then it became Q1 2012, and then it became Q2 2012, and the beta test went for nine months because the game wasn't ready yet. So. Yeah. I, I people seem to get amnesia that this is Blizzard every time there's a release date that comes up again. It's like, oh, it'll be different this time, you know. <laughs> I do that. I, I'm guilty of that. I'm <laughs> you're both guilty of that. I keep saying my you're only hope is the 1. court 1. of flux. That's my only hope. I'm all I'm looking for is 1.09. Everything else is kind of whenever it happens, it happens. But I'm I'm hoping for 1.09 sooner rather than later. So at least I can mess around with the new Paragon system. You know, and obviously all of the devs are are crunching on expansion stuff and not worrying about D3 classic stuff. Yeah, and until BlizzCon at least, when they got to get the beta ready, the demo ready, and all the new features and stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. Just make the beta one of the, that demo, you know, and then then they have most of the beta created, you know. I mean, the beta is going to be the full game, I would think. At least that's how D2X was. I mean, it's the full act, and you have to be able to play your high level characters in it. Well, the you D3 have... beta was only up to the Skeleton King, though, right? Oh, well, that was level one characters, though. Oh, right. that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I mean, everything they're testing in this beta is, you know, it's high level stuff. Right. You know, the D the D three beta was testing just is it playable? Is it you know the tooltips working? Are the graphics working? And, yeah, that's a good point. And they wanted to make sure BattleNet was really functioning smoothly, so they wouldn't have any problems on launch day. So that all worked out real well. <laughs> so let's hear your prediction, Flux. What 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 is your prediction for those two things? Well, we've had this guess the release date thread for months, and I've had December, I think ninth, uh, some, you know, early December twenty fourteen is my release date prediction forever. I'm not changing that, yeah. so okay. I guess I, I guess I have to scale back, say beta, you know, May or June, and then we get six months, and then it comes out in early December. Oh, that would suck. I really hope it's not that long. I, I would be, I'll be. I'll be not be at all surprised if it isn't if they don't get the game out in twenty fourteen. I mean, this is Blizzard. But... I know. I won't be surprised either, but it would really suck. Well, they tend to do better with expansions than they do for original releases. The problem so, is like, the... Uh, t- original release took 12 years, so <laughs> I hope they do better than that. The problem well, is yeah. next holiday is also the timing for the next WoW expansion, if it goes by the last few, too. So we got that to comp- comp- compete with also. So no. It's going to be tough. Are they going to give you turtles instead of panda bears? I don't know. I yeah. stopped playing. <laughs> <laughs> it will suck you back in. It's like D3 did. D3X comes out. Ooh, i got to start playing again. <laughs> Every panda level gives you a panda point. <laughs> <laughs> and a new sparkle pony. That's all I know about WoW. Uh, that's too funny. We're talking about the transmog thing on the next show, because Nineball is a big WoW player, so he can, he can go into that. Otherwise, I would ask you about it now. But, okay, last, any last thoughts, guys? we got to wrap this up. Nope. Ex- obviously, you both have Excite. I'm yeah, excited. I'm excited. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep the excitement, but I'm definitely excited. Um, I'm probably just going to keep playing. I told the process you left. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like I said, I'm just hoping for 1.09, and I'm looking forward to BlizzCon. So, are you going to BlizzCon? Going to BlizzCon? No, no, no. I'm just gonna, you know, I might watch it on DirecTV or something like that. But I'm not heading out. <laughs> or just wait. Yeah, I'll send you a, po- I'll, yeah, I'll send you a postcard. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, any last thoughts for you, Junior Mint? Nope, no, I'm good. I'm excited. Okay, you, this is part one of the show. Part two, we're going to talk about more Crusader stuff and story and plot. And let's see what else I got on here. New legendary items, uh, Act Four, Act Five story, uh, loot runs, some other stuff. So uh, that will be probably posted a couple of days after this one. So thanks for listening and uh, moo. 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 moo.